7.30 now on a Friday morning, a picture-perfect day in Lower Manhattan, and we are just moments away from watching history live on our air. The One World Trade Center spire will be lowered into place, 1,776 feet in the air, a number loaded with symbolism and meaning for this country, and that is 104 floors up or so, and he will have the honor of kicking off what has to be an incredibly delicate operation, Matt, and one that is certainly loaded with meaning for all Americans. Oh, Savannah, I mean, imagine the family members of those who lost their lives on 9-11, not only the people who worked at the World Trade Center, but those heroic first responders who rushed into danger and lost their lives because of what happened here. And over the last, oh, I don't know, 11 years or so, or 12 years, they've watched what's happened at this site. Sometimes it's been painfully slow, but over the last six plus years, it's moved at quite a pace. And so many people have put their heart and their soul into this progress or this process. And they're going to get to see the crowning achievement in a couple of minutes. By the way, the guy who gets to actually have the honor of lowering the final two sections of the spire into place, he's up in the crane just above me here. He's with the uh, Operating Engineers Local 14. That's John Schaffner in the cab, and it's a delicate process. He'll pick this 75-foot piece of spire up, lift it above what's already in place, and then gently, ever so gently, lower it to those iron workers from Local 40 up on the crow's nest, and they will then bolt it into place. Now, guys like that have a tough commute to work every morning. They get up very early, and boy, it is not easy to get here. I found that out firsthand just a couple of hours ago, Savannah. Got it, thank you. There was no napping on my way to work this morning. I caught an express elevator to the roof, and I was lucky. Usually, the tower crew has to take three elevators to the top. A 30 to 45 minute commute just inside the building. Needless to say, these days, they brown bag lunch. At the top, my workout begins. I have to climb nine ladders, about 20 stories, to reach my post on the crane platform. If you don't like ladders, you can't come here. Over 1,500 feet off the ground. I can't imagine doing this every day. Though for the crane operators, the view from their corner office is priceless. Okay, we've made it to the top. Just in time for sunrise. Where's the Starbucks? It really is an incredible journey. It's harrowing at times. I'm not afraid of heights, but I found my knees knocking at certain times. This is Scott Reckler. He is the vice chairman of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Scott, first of all, thank you so much for your hospitality. Thank you. Talk to me about the significance of today. Well, this really is a symbolic moment because this building really represents the resiliency of this country. You know, these people, the thousand men and women that have worked here tirelessly, have done it really as a passion and a tribute for the people that perished on 9-11 right on this site. Yeah, I know a lot of the workers have the 9-11 sticker on yeah. their helmets, and they have been waiting for this moment for 12 years, but certainly the last six and a half that they've been building this building. So, Scott, can we do this? Let's do it. I think we're ready. Let's All bring right. it up. If John Schaffner up in the cab is ready, if these guys down below are ready, let's, let's have the crowning achievement. And now what will happen is John will start to lift this 75-foot long section, two sections actually, of the spire. These two sections combined, Savannah, weigh about 40 tons. You can see, I think, as this section starts to lift, you can see the beacon, which is right here in the center. That's a, a very technically advanced beacon that when it's in place and operating can be seen for 50 miles in any direction, Savannah, on a clear day. And I think I heard some applause for some of the workers, the people have just poured their hearts into this project. And as we watch this moment unfold, Matt, I got to tell you, it is impossible to not have a lump in your throat right now. Well, you know, it, these people got up here. A lot of the folks on the platform below us, again, we are above the roof. We are on a platform that's part of the crane above the roof of One World Trade Center. These people just wanted to be here this morning. And I would imagine down on the ground, there are a lot of other trades members, union members, who've had some role in the construction of this building. They are probably gathered down there, and there will be a huge, 
piece of applause when this thing is finally lowered into place. They tell me that this, because it is such a delicate operation, imagine what would happen. I have to tell you, weather was important here. If the wind was too high, they couldn't have done it because you start to get a 40-ton section of spire swinging because of the wind. That is a very bad situation. They're going to lift it straight up. But when they do, they'll get it above the 1,701-foot section that's already in place. They'll lower it down to those iron workers, and then they'll bolt it in place. And that's when you'll hear the applause, Savannah and Natalie. That is when these people will let some of their emotions go. Well, it is a, a moment loaded with emotion. And, and Matt, forgive me if you mentioned this already, but how long do we think this process will take? It's about a 10 to 15 minute process. You know, they, they have to do this carefully. It'll take about six or seven, eight minutes to get this above what's already there. Then they have to make sure it's lined up exactly right. By the way, as, as the bottom of these sections pass us right now, I, I, can, I can tell you that what they did initially is they lifted it up off the platform here and they checked it very carefully to make sure there was no debris, nothing extra stuck to that mounting bracket area so that there would be anything less than a perfect fit. And then they put those 60 bolts in and tighten them. They're heavy. I actually held one of them in my hands a short time ago and they'll make sure that thing is absolutely secure, Savannah. Well, we will wait and watch. You stay right there. I know you're not going anywhere. Matt, we'll check in with you in a moment. Let's check in with Matt, who is down at the One World Trade Center site witnessing history. What do you see, Matt? Yeah, it's going great here, Savannah. The, these two sections of the spire are now probably a couple of hundred feet above us. They're going straight up. There was a moment, I will tell you, about five seconds ago where it looked like it was starting to swing a little bit. Talk about the skill and precision that a guy like John Schaffner in that cab has to employ at this time. It's got to be so steady. You can't get that thing moving in any bad direction. You don't want it to even nick slightly the existing structure here. It's probably getting up to about 20, 30 feet from where those iron workers from Local 40 are right now. It will be raised above them. Then the crane will swing a little bit, putting it directly above them. They'll check it one last time, and then John Schaffner, Schaffner will slowly begin to lower it. You saw it has a square mounting bracket at the bottom with lots of holes for those bolts. They will literally slide that thing perfectly into place and then quickly begin to bolt it into place. And, and it will be the crowning achievement of this, pro of this uh, project, Savannah, that's taken so long, the planning. And, and there were so many disagreements here after 9-11. What should be done with this site? Should it remain a memorial? Should there be any buildings here? Who would finance it? What was the design? Should there be two towers or one? Well, all that was put aside. The rebuilding began, and everybody came together, especially these people here who've made this possible, Savannah.